Back in the early days of gaming, video game soundtracks were pretty damn simplistic, due to the technological restraints making anything other than a few beeps and boops impractical. For example, the earliest game to have continuous background music was Space Invaders, and it was just a loop of this. Ah, stimulating stuff. But this obviously didn't last for long, eventually we got stuff like the Mario Brothers iconic soundtrack, some downright beautiful Zelda music, and holy shit look at us now. It's expected for a game to release with a fully fleshed out soundtrack to accompany gameplay at every point in the game nowadays. And this is why it's so crucial that you get the soundtrack right. On the whole, I don't really feel there are many soundtracks that are inherently bad, just that there are bad uses of them. If the music doesn't fit what you're doing in the game, then it starts threatening the immersion and hey, what other reason is there for playing games than to escape this fun little thing we call reality? While Space Invaders was extremely limited in what it could do with its soundtrack, what it achieves is pretty much perfect. Again, you only have the four beeps on repeat throughout, but it's what gives this game pacing and something for our brains to do in the background while we mindlessly shoot the aliens. As you progress in the level and the aliens get closer to you, they start progressively getting faster and faster, making them harder to hit. This is where the music also speeds up with them, adding this extra layer of stress to the game. This is four beeps. Four beeps on a loop can make a game thrice as stressful. So surely, all soundtracks today should easily be able to create the perfect background music for video games, he stated sarcastically to set up for the rest of the video. One of the absolute worst things that a soundtrack can do is piss the player off. And what do you know, this is something that happens time and time again, as if the developers haven't been playtesting this thing for hours. Repetitive, loud, annoying, or straight up out of place music are like a disease that can infect what may well be a great game and render it unplayable at worst and fucking annoying at best. In Animal Crossing, if you exit the game without saving, you'll get this fella called Rossetti, who will cheer you out about resetting the game. However, there's this obnoxious music playing in the background that almost sounds like a bunch of random notes. All this music does is make me want to reset again out of spite, but if I do that, I know I'll have to hear this godforsaken music again while I make believe Mole shouts at me for turning my game off wrong. If you've ever played the Super Mario Bros games, you'll probably know that when you start running out of time, a little jingle plays and then the normal theme goes really, really fast. Not in Wario Land, <laughs> no. Wario Land opted for these demented random hand slams on a church organ, which just sort of randomly evolve as the song goes on until it eventually ends. Why? I want to know why this was created, let alone why it was put into the actual game. The NES game 1942 has this one fairly infamous song called Stage Theme, which is this sort of repeating beat with one loud beep that absolutely pierces the ears. I think the fact that this is so horrible to listen to only takes second place in the tier list of what is wrong with this music, because of how repetitive it is. Honest to god it sounds like friggin Morse code when you try and listen to it, and there's barely any real rhythm. I really don't want to dwell on bad soundtracks, but oh my god I cannot leave this one out. Crazy Bus Title Screen. If there was ever a song that could drive a human insane, it would be this. I'm gonna play a few seconds of this song now, okay? You've been warned. I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be, other than R2-D2 screaming for help after downloading a virus. The Rossetti music doesn't sound too bad now, does it? Okay, now that we've had our wine about some bad soundtracks, it's time to gush about some soundtracks that understood their job perfectly. The entire point of a soundtrack is to accompany and complement the gameplay that is happening at that time. Fighting monsters in space? Try some of this. Doing a bit of farming in your downtime? Give this a go. Spending your weekend playing a bit of Call of Duty 3 on the Wii? Why? One of the most iconic soundtracks in indie gaming is Stardew Valley. It's beautiful, but more importantly, it does exactly what you want a soundtrack to do. Each season has a couple of different tracks that absolutely capture the spirit of the world around it. Spring has this amazing optimistic feel to it which gives the beginning of the start of year this feeling of potential ahead. Then in summer we get some really upbeat and happy tracks for the warm and bright weather ahead. Autumn, <coughs> fall, has this music which accompanies your soundtrack brilliantly because there's this overall feeling of change in the game as the weather begins to get colder and how differently everything looks compared to the last two seasons. We really do hear this change too. A much slower and calmer atmosphere is being presented to the player here and ugh, I love this season so much. We then go into winter where everything has a really delicate feel to it, much like the ice around us. And we haven't even touched the music that plays in the mines or the town centre. 
Every single note in this soundtrack complements the gameplay and the visuals at all times, no matter what you are doing. It's one of those games that has so many amazing elements that you don't really realise how good things like the soundtrack are until you just sit down and listen to them. Oftentimes, soundtracks are used to enhance the atmosphere rather than complement it like in Stardew. So in Risk of Rain 2, a lot of that epic shooter feel comes from the big powerful music in the background. Coffee Talk will then bring a much more relaxed and laid back atmosphere, mainly due to the lo-fi soundtrack that plays throughout. Or a great example being the plethora of horror games that actually thrive on the little to no soundtrack at all. The soundtracks can take one situation and flip the entire vibe of the game on its head. Super Mario Galaxy has an amazing soundtrack. Actually, generally all of the Mario titles do, but Galaxy in particular has some of my favourite Nintendo music of all time. There are some big powerful songs that, to me, highlight the might and size of space, accompanied with these beautiful piano pieces that have these sort of weird spacey synth sounds that kind of highlight that while space is big, it's also very empty and alone. Each galaxy has some really unique music that captured the personality of that world perfectly. Honeyhive Galaxy has an upbeat track that kind of sounds like the bees themselves are playing the music. Space Drunk Galaxy has a nice slow sound to it that fits in with the fact that it's just shit floating around in space. And one of my favourite songs of all time, Comet Observatory, which just feels... right, you know? The music in this game was performed by a live orchestra, and you can really feel that while playing. But what really makes this special is that the tempo of the music synchronises with the game tempo. Listen, I'm not an expert in music theory, but what I do know is that the music is changing along with the gameplay, which kind of takes you into this next level of immersion, where instead of one soundtrack just playing no matter what you do, the music is accommodating for your gameplay and getting more or less intense around your decisions. There are some really rare occasions where game soundtracks end up doing much more than being just ear candy. In the game Celeste, the music is composed by Lena Rain, and oh my god, I just adore the soundtrack to this game. The prologue starts out slow and builds up when you fall off a bridge. First Steps is one of the best Stage 1 songs ever created. Resurrections changes as you play through the level. Scattered and Lost gives me a fucking anxiety attack. Then we get into the song Cold Anxiety and here we go for round 2. Madeline and Theo is a beautiful little guitar piece with these sounds of the tide behind it. Confronting Myself is maybe my favourite boss battle song of all time. And Reach for the Summit is this brilliant callback to First Steps. Many of these songs have pretty deep meanings that can relate to the main character's mental state at the time, but none of them at all come close to being as eerie yet amazing as In The Mirror. This song plays during a mirror world section of the game, which really plays on the themes of insecurities by bringing them to life in this dimension. And sometimes you can kind of hear this weird sound during it that vaguely sounds like talking. And when you reverse it, you find out that it is literally somebody, presumably the main character Madeline, talking about their fears and insecurities. This is something extremely special, that just adds an entirely different dimension to what is already one of the best platformers ever created in my opinion. When the soundtrack starts to tie in and even add to the story of the game, it hasn't just done its job, it's redefined what video game music can be. How do we go from a limited amount of beeps and boops to music that fucking tells part of the story on its own? What used to be something to try and keep our minds engaged while playing, and in some cases help with the pacing, has become something that can elect real, human emotions from us. Some of the music in this game was created to try and help us feel the same anxiety Madeline was experiencing and man, at times I really did feel like I was up there on the gondola. When soundtracks can not only fit in with the other elements of the game like the visuals or gameplay, but to go a step further and begin to define how the game feels, match your own gameplay, or in some cases be part of the actual story, this, this is when soundtracks can make an already amazing game something even more special. Thanks for watching.